Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another session recorded live in the Chattanooga Downtown Library. Tonight, it's rock and roll with the Joel Beaver Band. <laughs>
That one's called Apostrophe Yes. It is the uh, opening track off my debut album, Ginger Rock. The next one will be the second track for off Ginger Rock. One, two, or three. The end to my world is drawing near. With the step that you take toward the door. Okay, this next song here is called New York Times. It's also on Ginger Rock here. It goes something like this. Kick it off there. Town. 
about when I think about my New York times. Oh, yes, she is. She is what I think about when I think about my New York times. A little closer to a Halloween than it is Valentine's Day, but it's one we do on the one called uh, just another long Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. Well, baby, it's been such a long time, girl, since you've been gone. I still think about you every day And wonder what went wrong Found with all of its hearts and flowers It always reminds me of you, yeah, yeah But just another lonely Valentine's Day And I'm still missing you, Go. I'm still missing you Lonely around the holidays. And I'm here to tell you it's true. Yeah, but there's one special holiday that comes to mind whenever I think about you. Fine time with all of its hearts and flowers. Yeah, it always reminds me of you. Yeah, yeah. I'm still missing you Yeah, yeah, well, it's just another lonely Valentine's Day I'm still missing you Give me some Trevor
This one is called Ghost. You guys sound great. How does that go down these days? That that's it's coming up on seventy years old. That song, right? Yeah, it's 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 getting on up there. It's it's it's, it's kind of it's kind of strange because it's like people don't r- know they like it anymore. It's like we get on some shows when it's just like you know random people playing you know newer newer kinds of stuff, and then we get in the middle of it, start playing stuff like that, and all of a sudden everyone just kind of wakes up like, hey, what's going on here? And it's, <laughs> Like, we didn't expect that. <laughs> Look out. Seriously. <laughs> well, we did that bluegrass festival recently, <laughs> and the headliners were like a traditional bluegrass band. Yeah, we played and they were a like, bluegrass band not long ago. <laughs> you should have gone after us. <laughs> so tell me about this band. Did, did you start out, was your intention when you started to put together a band to play rock and roll? Literally, well, you know, the 50s yeah, style it, rock it's, and roll? You know, it, it's interesting to, to say that because, you know, it's just kind of trying to figure out what genre to tell people we play because everything is so stuck into boxes these days that it's hard to tell them they, you know like what what do you play and i'm like well i play rock and roll you know what, what do you yeah, i mean we we play some stuff that's kind of 60s-ish but that's sort of pushing in i guess <laughs> but it's it's really just old school 50s 60s 70s style rock and, and, rock roll, and roll is yeah. kind of a loaded thing anymore anyway and it i mean you talk about i play rock and roll oh so <laughs> Led Zeppelin? No. Well, I guess yeah, not. Sometimes. So much. But. We have played rock and roll. Well, that's what that song <laughs> Rock and Roll is about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, yeah. It's, it's about being a kid in the 50s. Because mm-hmm. Robert mm-hmm. Plant probably came of age with Elvis. and well, He's probably a little younger than John Lennon, but not much, right? Yeah, a couple of years, day, maybe. Yeah. 
So that's, I mean, that's what he's singing about. Yeah. We've done that one not long ago. <laughs> so all of the, the, the bands in the 60s, for sure. Oh, yeah. And some of the bands in the 70s, I think, they came of age with the original generation of rock and rollers. Yeah. So that's, all, you know, Elton John... Give, oh, yeah. give him a couple of minutes, and, and he's out there banging the piano again, <laughs> yeah. just like Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh yeah, you know? seriously, yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's 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 interesting because uh, you know I grew up playing with such you know older players and everything that it's that's where I learned to play was all that you know, that kind of stuff. So it's you know that's where it came from. <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering. Did did, yeah. did you get what you get that at least from your granddad, right? Oh yeah, from my granddad and from my dad. My dad was in the Rockabilly Hall of Fame and had all that, you know, that kind of late 50s, early 60s music, and he had a hit back in 63. <laughs> Your dad was a Rockabilly player, so you, oh, came, yeah, by it, yeah. you came by it honestly. You got it uh, at the feet of the man who played the music. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, I've, I've, I've played that stuff since I was probably eight years old, been doing sessions and touring stuff. Since I was a little bit of kid. So what about you guys? <laughs> you, you guys are way too young. At least your granddad. Right? Probably your, maybe even your great granddad. I've learned most of this through through Joel. You know, have to wrangle them around here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, playing with him. I learned all these Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis songs. Like, listen, kids, I'm gonna tell you right now. I know you want to play your hippity hoppity music, but we're gonna play some rock and roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, introduce your partners. All right. Well. uh here uh, next to me is uh, my bass player, Mr. Trevor Dennison. Nice to meet you. And right over here is, I'm, I'm pointing as if you can see me pointing on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next to him is my drummer, the uh, amazing Mr. Matt Flowers. Playing rock and roll, it, it's all about the drummer. Yeah, I, I think Joel's, we were having a conversation the other day about playing some of this old music with some level of authenticity, um, some level of conviction. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when you have a little bit of honesty behind it, which I believe Joel does, then uh, it doesn't come across as a gimmick or as as something um, lesser than what it is. Yeah, it, 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 it's one thing about playing this style of music is you, you really have to put yourself into it, you know, full full force. Because if you don't, you really run the risk of becoming kind of cheesy or yeah, kind of turning yeah. into a hey we're doing a fifties show That's absolutely hot, blah, blah. it, it, it won't work like that yeah it won't work and, and that, that music those guys they weren't well, you know that from your dad oh they, yeah exactly they, they didn't they weren't holding anything back no I mean you you, you watch you know Jerry Lee and Chuck Berry and the you know the all the original you know film of them playing and, and they're you know it's it's as if it was the heavy metal of its day they're just out there absolutely. You know, giving as hard as they can, and and as you said about the drummer, it's very important to have a drummer that really can get in there and and play hard and and really keep the keep that up because it's like I said, if the drummer's not into it and really, you know, heavy, it could run the risk of not being as as good as it can be. It could be kind of cheesy. <laughs> I was listening to Elvis Presley when he when he did that '68 special. Yeah. And he had that same drummer that I think worked with him for pretty much the whole time he was making music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy knows how to swing. D D D DJ Fontana, which is a yes, oh, okay. DJ Fontana. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and this guy, this, he knew how to swing. Hmm. And, and you have to be able to swing to play rock and roll. Rock and roll is not straight 4-4. Four, four. There's, there's an accent. You know? Yeah, and I, th I think nowadays we just have rock. I don't think you have the roll. I think that's where that comes from. That's something Joel's talked about before. You those were old jazz drummers that they'd grab and bring into the rock band and they are they're playing these swing time beats against the straight guitar and you have that oh yeah that's kind that's of definitely evident like in the early chuck berry records where mm -hmm. the drummers don't even know what to do they're kind of playing this jazz thing behind chuck playing just plowing through it yeah. and uh, i mean it goes back to the the term rock and roll itself i mean most people credit to alan freed but even before that it was a term for you know kind of getting lucky in the back seat of the car so you know you're you're you got to get out there and really give it what for, or else you know that's that's what rock and roll is. You're rocking and a rolling. The drummer's got to have that have that beat going on, you know. I was listening to uh, Keith Richards. He's reading his autobiography. He said everybody talks about the rock. He says not the rock. Exactly, it's the yeah. roll. The roll is the important part, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what makes the Stones sound the way they do. 
How was it for you, Matt, when you come up against this music? Did, did you find it a challenge after the stuff you've been playing before? I think uh, some of it's physically challenging. I think for me and for, for Trevor also, uh, we, we have to play fast <laughs> for, uh, for however long Joel wants to run these songs. <laughs> Sometimes we'll run them for a long time and we're uh, trying to catch our breath at the end. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, I think there's, there's another thing that, that a lot of people discount, and I didn't even give that much thought until Charlie Watts started saying, mm -hmm. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Yeah. It's so physical, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can play a two-hour set anymore, you know? Yeah. Not to uh, take away what you're doing, uh, Trevor, I was listening to you playing some nice lines over there. Mm -hmm. Thank and, you. I mean, you're... Uh, I don't mean to suggest that... Let's just leave it that the drummer and the bass player are as one, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Matt needs you, and you need Matt. You, you, you guys are having a conversation the whole time behind mm -hmm. Joel. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the interesting things that I'm learning is that, especially when you talk about, when Matt was talking about being authentic with the rock and roll style, you know, these guys, they are improvising. You know, they're not doing the same the the same line every time they're changing it up in that conversation as you mentioned that when he says something i can say it along with him and we we do that quite a bit i think we can feel that out and you know good good drummers and bassists they know how to to work together in that way and i think we do a pretty good job of that so we're coming back to it's it's kind of rooted in jazz but it's really blues mm-hmm Right? Rhythm and blues. Mm -hmm. That's really what you're playing. Yeah, some of these are sped up. I mean, I think the form would even be kind of a 12 bar with the yeah. 1, 4, 5. Mm, it is. It's a really yeah, fast blues. A yeah. Straight 12 bar blues. So do you find people uh, dance to the stuff you play, or, or is is there a generation now that knows how to dance to music like that? You know, it's it's weird. It's, it's like... Whenever you start playing this kind of music, people don't realize they know how to dance to it, but they start moving anyway. It's just like it's 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 got some kind of power to it that you know it's the same power that that grabbed me as a little kid and made me want to play this kind of music. It just it just it just it just grabs a hold of them and they you know whether they think they like it or not it 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 doesn't take any prisoners. <laughs> it's just like all right, we're gonna rock and roll now. <laughs> Yeah, 
and death, you know it had no problem. So step on what you have to do. Well, just to prepare for those changes, you know where they are heading for you. I'm just going carry on, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Everything changes. Yeah. All right, I guess I better do an intro for this one here. This was one written by my dad and my grandfather. And originally, my dad was supposed to do this show with us, so uh, we're going to do his biggest hit here from 1963 called I Got a Rocket in My Pocket. Count me off. A satellite. I passed that Sputnik out of space, then went out of sight. I got a rocket in my pocket. I got a rocket in my pocket. I got a rocket in my pocket. And I'm ahead for the moon. an old Elvis song here. Elvis. You know Elvis. Not Costello or that skater dude. There we go. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
better stop me half to death. You just bury kids or two and still up there and death on my baby. I'm a lucky charm to bring And if you give me this one Sweet kiss I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, Berry for you. One, two, three. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. The Joel Beaver Band recorded live in the library. They recorded these sessions on Thursday afternoons in the -the state-of-the-art recording studio. It's on the second floor of the Chattanooga Public Library downtown in Chattanooga. The recordings of mostly but not exclusively Chattanooga-based bands are produced, engineered and mixed by Sam Mensah with help from William Bowers. The executive producers for Live in the Library, me for WUTC, Sam Mensah for the Library. We'll have another session live in the library next Thursday.